Okay. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever. Uh, today is Sunday. Uh, this is chapter six chemistry. Uh, chapter six. They want from <clears throat> for six point one to six point six. Okay, six point one does not have a quiz. Okay, there's no quiz. Uh, for if you don't want to go through the book, which I don't advise you going through the book because the book is long, and yeah, they're just talking a lot. Well, uh, there's a lot of extra information in the book that yeah, it's, it's just not necessary. Okay, uh, go through the notes. The notes are as usual. Uh, I don't know if it's in term two or term one, but I think they will be found uh, under all weeks. Uh, just one second. It's not loading. Why is it loading? Wait, wait. Stop. Uh, chemistry chapter yeah so here chapter five notes chapter six notes please make sure you go over them if you have time but for chapter six notes uh for chapter six point one uh you go from question one all the way down here to ten from one to ten okay that's six point one so if you don't want to do the book uh and you only want to do the notes for six point one it's up until question ten okay I'll go through them quickly you know that the solid has a definite volume and shape. A liquid has a definite volume but no definite shape because you know the liquid changes its shape depending on the container and you know the gas has neither a definite volume nor a definite shape and all these are easy uh, the particles in a solid are very tight uh, the, they can only vibrate okay they can't move they can only vibrate uh, in the liquid state the particles are touching but there are enough spaces between them to allow them to slide past each other that's why liquids can like you can pour water that's why because uh, the, the molecules of the liquids are sliding past each other. Uh, in a gas, particles have big distances between them. Okay, uh, that's why they expand. Okay, they have infinite distances between them. Uh, this, this is not important. Three, uh, the solid and liquid states are called condensed phases of matter. Okay, you know, they don't ask this. But you just read, go over these. There's a, a lot of stuff here that uh, isn't asked. But no, it's just information that is in the books. This is summarizes, basically summarizing the book. Uh, what am I for? Gaseous elements uh, are found on the top right of the periodic table. You guys know that. Uh, the boiling point is the temperature uh, from which the liquid vaporizes. Vaporizes means changes to a gas. Okay, this is important. Number six. At the boiling point, vapor pressure is equal to the surrounding pressure. Bubbles of vapor can form anywhere within the liquid, and molecules escape from the surface of the liquid to enter the gas phase as vapor. So let's say I'll put it in blue. You have uh, a cup of water. Okay, and there's all liquid molecules here, uh, water molecules here. Yeah? Let's say, and I'm raising the temperature, right? Okay, F obviously the vapor pressure will increase, okay, to a point where these liquid molecules are going to start forming, they're going to start forming bubbles on the surface, and they're going to start escaping and evaporating. This is how you boil, okay? So, what you need to know is. Bubbles will form, everybody knows that. You know, when you boil water, bubbles will always form. Uh, you need to know that uh, at the boiling point, the vapor pressure is equal to the surrounding pressure. It should be here somewhere. Uh, yeah, vapor pressure is equal to the surrounding pressure. Okay, this is important because it was in the book. Uh, I remember reading it. Uh, they escape from the surface of the liquid to enter the gas phase. You guys know this. It doesn't have to be at the boiling point because you guys know sometimes you can leave a cup of water. Uh, and the next day you come, it's gone. Uh, so it doesn't have to be at the boiling point. It could be also at room temperature. Okay. Uh, with increasing altitude, atmospheric pressure decreases, and so does boiling point. I remember the question that came in the AMS. They gave like uh, the altitude. They gave like boxes here, box here, box here, box here, box here. Okay. So they would ask you to fill in the boiling points. Like here, it would be one hundred. Here it would be like 97, here it would be 94, here it would be 89. Something like this. A question like this came, I remember. Okay, to uh, to fill in the blanks for the boiling points. Okay, uh, I think they'll bring it in the periodic. But no, what they're trying to say is as altitude increases, uh, the boiling point decreases. Okay, the melting point is the temperature at which a solid becomes liquid. Okay, you know this ice melts it becomes liquid at the same temperature remember same temperature same average kinetic energy we said this from chapter 5 and then this is the heating curve cooling curve okay 
for the most part, most of this is repeat, and I don't think they asked about the heating curve or cooling curve in any of the AMSs or periodics. Had in the final, they didn't ask uh, about this potential energy kinetic energy. But for him, uh, know that the kinetic energy uh, is constant if the temperature is constant. I think. Uh, yeah. So if the temperature changes, if the temperature changes, kinetic energy changes. Why? Because we said, remember we said, if it's same temperature, same average kinetic energy. If the temperature is changing, that means the kinetic energy will change. So here from A to B, they're saying what is happening for the potential energy and the kinetic energy. If if the temperature is increasing, that means the kinetic energy will increase. From B to C, the temperature is not changing. It's staying the same. So kinetic energy will stay the same, but potential energy will increase. Then here from C to D, again, the temperature is increasing. The kinetic energy will increase. Okay. Uh, you guys know when it's like this, from A to B, it's one state. It would be like, let's say this is the solid. Here it would be liquid and solid. And then here it would be liquid. Okay, so that's, that's how it goes. Solid, liquid, solid, then liquid. You know, when it's straight, when the temperature is not changing, that means you know, they're gaining the potential energy to change to liquid fully. خلص. If you get what I mean, if it starts at solid, it's gaining the kinetic energy to split the solid molecules. So now it starts splitting, it became solid and liquid. And here the kinetic energy is not changing, the potential energy is increasing. Why is the potential energy increasing? Because they want to the potential, the potential energy to change this solid liquid to become خلص liquid. Okay, and then here again, if you draw it again, it's going to come straight from here from C to D. Kinetic energy is increasing. Why? Because we want to move these liquid molecules and split them apart to become liquid and gas. And then after that, it will become just gas. Okay, this is how it goes. Uh, the, the, we had these in grade nine. I don't know if we, if we had from grade eight. So, like, look, A, from A to B, since the temperature is increasing, kinetic energy uh, will increase. Okay. Uh, the average kinetic energy increases and the potential energy is the same okay because we're always in the liquid state A to B yeah uh, they started at liquid not solid okay uh, B the from B temperature is not changing so we said kinetic energy will stay the same okay uh, it will kinetic energy will remain the same but the, it will have more potential energy okay and then C to D uh, we said same thing as part A Kinetic energy will increase, the average kinetic energy will increase, but potential energy will remain the same. Okay, and then question 10, this is the last one for 6.1, the rest will be 6.2. The average kinetic energy is directly proportional to the temperature, we said this in five, chapter 5, and so at constant temperature, the average kinetic energy remains the same. Yani, uh, holy, it's nothing too hard, this is 6.1. Okay, like this, we'll less than 6.1, how long was that? 8 minutes. Okay. Hello, uh, Bay, 6.2. Uh, uh, okay, uh, 6.2 now. Uh, we're on 6.2. Uh, wait, let me. What timestamp is I'm gonna start putting the timestamps in the description. Uh, 8.30. Okay, uh, so if anybody you know wants to only watch the recording for 6.2, they can just skip to 8.30. Uh, and I'll do so on and so forth for each quiz. Okay, uh, which are uh, true about oh pure and salt water okay uh one question that came in the ams before i start with the quiz uh was uh, what will happen as the solute concentration increases okay uh it was something like i thought text text yeah they said they asked something like uh what will happen how do i make this uh, what what happens as the solute concentration increases? Okay, uh, the answer was, if if I'm correct, it was the freezing point decreases and melting, uh, sorry, boiling point increases. These two choices, okay. Uh, that, that was the answer. So what I'm trying to tell you is, for a pure substance like water, 
the melting point and the boiling point is fixed you know it freezes at zero degrees celsius water and it boils at 100 degrees celsius these are fixed they're constant however if you have something like salty water which is a solution okay salt is the solute or solute yeah solute solute is the thing you add to the mixture so if i say salty water salt is the solute okay so if you add salt to a water mixture the freezing point will decrease whereas the freezing point uh, it freezes at a lower temperature and the boiling point will increase so it boils at a higher temperature okay and then they're saying uh the sol the salty water solution leaves a solid residue after boiling obviously I mean, if you boil salt water the water will boil and the salt will just stay it's it's not gonna go right so it's gonna leave a residue residue any yani, uh, crystals yani, something's left behind okay uh question two a uh, student was given three tubes and he was asked to identify which one contains pure uh, copper sulfate okay uh, how do you know look pure substances always have fixed constants what are the fixed constants they're in the notes i think uh, melting point boiling point density and vapor pressure so if you see any of these in the choices here they will be correct but in this case concentration concentration can be different for copper sulfate number of moles obviously it could be different for copper sulfate because you could have different masses and again by measuring the mass you could have different masses of copper sulfate but one thing for sure every pure copper sulfate has the same melting point so how do i know if this is pure copper sulfate to compare the melting point okay because the melting point is a constant which are alloys you guys remember alloys are solid mixtures when you when you mix two solids together okay uh like brass is an alloy steel is an alloy bronze is an alloy uh steel by the way is iron and something else i forgot but when you, whenever you mix two metals together you get something called an alloy okay these are from grade nine i'm pretty sure you guys remember them uh a solution okay this one uh you can memorize i'll try explaining a solution is heterogeneous with respect to change of phase what do i mean you're going to say no no a solution is homogeneous how are they saying heterogeneous okay they're saying with respect to change of phase so if i have salt water salt water okay uh what if i change the phase change the phase means yani, uh this is liquid right what if i change it to solid i'll ch I'll, I'll freeze it i'll freeze the salt water Let's say I freeze it. I freeze it. What will I get? I'll get ice, obviously. And above the ice, I'll get the salt. So salt. What am I trying to say? Is here they were mixed together, the salt plus the water. You couldn't really tell the difference. But after you freeze it, you're gonna get ice, and the salt will be above the ice, like it's gonna be resting above the ice. Why? Because salt does not freeze. And why? Because a solution that was homogeneous is heterogeneous when you change the phase this is called phase change let's say come in salt plus h2o salt water let's say and i boil it now same thing i boil it i'm gonna get gas water vapor and i'm gonna get salt left behind so it's heterogeneous after you change the phase okay that's what it means Ooh. Uh, a pure substance is homogeneous with respect to change of phase. So water, like water is a pure substance. Whatever you do with just water, you freeze it, you boil it, you're going to be left with water. It's homogeneous. It gets you one substance. Hetero means more than one substance. Uh, at the same pressure, a pure substance has a pure substance has a fixed boiling point, right? Water always boils at 100, while a solution has a variable boiling point. Like I'll show you here. This the the thick line is pure water. You see how it's straight right at 100 it boils but however salt water is the thin line it goes up it starts boiling and it keeps on increasing so it's not fixed okay so solutions don't have a fixed boiling point okay solutions don't have a fixed they have a variable boiling point however a pure substance has a fixed boiling point alloys are example of solid solutions uh while dry air is an example of a gas solution this is you know, straightforward uh a solution is homogeneous they didn't say with respect to phase if they don't say with respect to phase manita you put homogeneous uh which one is a solution obviously is going to be the one which you can't tell the difference yani. it's uniform uh six okay which one is a pure substance the pure substance is the one that once it boils it stays straight these ones are solutions because their boiling point keeps on increasing after it starts boiling okay so the ones that stay straight that's that's the uh, solutions uh, as they, that's the pure substance the pure substance the one that stays straight it stays constant and what is this pure substance obviously you could say water pure water 
because it boils at 100 and what substance boils at 100 water okay bronze is uh, a solid solution because you know bronze is an alloy which is a solid solution ice water is a pure substance ice and water are both pure substances you can say no ice isn't a, isn't a pure substance but ice is water you know they're both h2o uh, pure substance air is a, ga a gaseous solution uh, and hydrogen hydrogen and helium are ga are also gaseous solutions you know air is made up of gases hydrogen and helium are obviously gases uh, for they are gaseous solutions question eight okay uh this is neon gas because neon is one you know you don't neon it's a gas why is it gas because the atoms are spread out they're, they're not close to each other this one here is water because you know water is h2o it's two hydrogen one oxygen like you're gonna say okay how do i know this one isn't water Tabiani, this one they're packed together so this is a solid this one they're all spread out these two for their gases and this one yani, they're bonding but they're a bit close to, to each other if I any obviously it's gonna be water this one here it's two stuck to each other it's gonna be nitrogen so you're gonna tell me how do i know which one's nitrogen this one or this one you know nitrogen is diatomic yeah diatomic we write it as n2 we don't say n we say n2 right for nitrogen it always exists as two always two okay for this one here is nitrogen gas n2 okay this one here is neon and xenon okay because it's two different it's two different gases and they're both spread out and this one here they're tightly packed together so obviously it's a solid solution which is an alloy okay we don't know what it is but it's obviously an alloy because they're tightly packed and anything that's tightly packed that's a solid now uh, 6.3 okay now we're on 6.3 uh, timestamp is 17 minutes 6.3 17 minutes okay uh this one is the one about the separation techniques oh, this was it was straightforward you no know, some people they still manage to get them wrong even now uh question one which is uh the following steps to separate salt iron and water salt iron and water okay I would say if they're all in one solution, you know that the salt dissolves in the water, but the iron does not dissolve. So you're you're gonna be left with the water solution, water plus salt, and then on the top you're gonna have iron crystals, right? How do we get rid of this iron? Obviously we have to filter it, right? You get the filter paper, and you filter it. Okay, after you filter it, you're gonna be left with water and salt, right? H two O and salt. How do I how do I get rid of the water here uh, and salt? Look, some people say crystallization, but that's wrong. Why why is that wrong? Because with using crystallization, you're only gonna be left with salt. But Anna, I want to have salt and water. Okay, so what do I do? I use distillation. Because distillation, it's something like this. Uh, this this, this the, the distillation flask. You have the the tube here. Then it goes down to the beaker. Uh, Mohem, the water is going to evaporate and go out and it's going to come down in the beaker and you're going to be left with the salt here and ACL or whatever salt you have here, okay? Using distillation, you can be left with salt and water which if you say crystallization, then no, no, you're going to be left with only salt because now we want salt and water, okay? Question two, and here is this. A mixture that can be separated by filtration sand water because you know we can we can filter sand and a mixture that can be separated by selective solubility is sand and sugar because look selective solubility means one dissolves in something and the other one dissolves in something so for salt and for uh, for selective solubility it means uh, one of them dissolve uh, in something but the other doesn't so look مثلاً, in question one you couldn't say selective solubility here because you have water already. So if I said salt and iron, then you could say selective solubility. But you can't, because you already have the water. Okay? But if they say if they tell you here sand and sugar, selective solubility, okay, how would you do it? It's because sand does not like how would I separate sand and sugar? I will see you would add water. Then the sugar will dissolve, but the sand will stay, right? So it's gonna be sugar plus water, right? And then on the outside, you're going to have 
sand because the sand didn't dissolve in the water. Then you filter. Then you distillate. Okay, that's that. That's how you separate. That's what selective solubility is. It's when you add a solvent, when you add something, when you add water. Sometimes you add ethanol. Okay. Okay. Uh, the question three. <coughs> Should, uh, the best technique that can be used to separate sand from salty water is filtration. Okay, they only they want to separate sand from salty water. They don't want to separate sand, salt, and water. So they would have salty water, H two O plus salt. Okay, and then they would have the sand above it. To get rid of the sand, obviously we filter it, right? And then you're gonna be left with salty water. And then you have sand here, right? That's. Uh, but if they asked you to separate the salt after that, you would say distillation. But then they want, what do they want? They only want to separate the sand. So you, you filter it. Uh, the best technique that's used to separate copper sulfate is crystallization. Copper sulfate is a salt. Okay, if you separate any salt from its solution, you crystallize it. Why am I not saying distillation? It's because I only want to separate the salt. I only want to separate the copper sulfate. Okay, question four. Uh, some heat is uh, applied to a mixture of solid iodine and salt. You guys know iodine sublimes, so the iodine will sublime and the salt remains a solid. Salt will not change because solids, the, the, sorry, as they, the salt, it doesn't melt. It melts, but at extremely high temperatures. So, yeah, it won't melt at this low temperature. So, because they said some heat. Okay, the iodine will sublime. Uh, the th the three mixtures that will sublime in the iodine, uh, ammonium chloride, which is over here, and uh, I think it was solid carbon dioxide, dry ice, dry ice. Uh, what can be separated by sublimation? Ammonium chloride and sugar. Okay, look, if they say iodine solution, don't pick it. If they say carbon dioxide solution, don't pick it. If they say ammonium chloride solution, don't pick it. Any solution is wrong. It has to be solid. Okay, it has to be solid. Uh, which one uh, to separate a mixture of ethanol and water? Okay, ethanol and water, obviously distillation A. And to separate oil and water, you use the separate refinement, which is B. Uh, in the AMS, they got the question, uh, which one can, oh, sorry, which one do you use to separate ethanol and water? And which one, uh, yeah, and they gave you two choices. You had the uh, distillation flask here. I had the thing down here. Uh, it goes down, down to the beaker, whatever. Okay, and here there was like a flame. Okay, there was a Bunsen burner under it. Okay, and this one, it was an electric stove. Okay, and you get it. Beaker here, whatever. Okay, like this. No. Okay. This one was an electric stove. This one was a Bunsen burner. Obviously, the one for ethanol, you can't pick the one with the Bunsen burner. Okay, you pick the one with an electric stove. Uh, I remember that question. It's game. Question six. NO2 has a brown color. Adding charcoal uh, to a gas mixture that contains NO2 causes the brown color to disappear. What does the charcoal do? It adsorbs the NO2. Okay, and the NO2 can be removed from the charcoal by heating. Anytime you want to reverse... Uh, the effect of absorption, you would heat up your adsorbent. Okay, you just heat it up anytime you want to reverse the effect. Okay, question seven uh, mixture one contains A and C. Mixture one, look, look, mixture one has a dot over here uh, and a dot over here. Okay, this dot belongs to C and this dot over here belongs to A. So it has A and C. So I think you get what I'm trying to say. Okay, this technique is used chromatography. Yeah, obviously chromatography. Anytime you have a paper, it's chromatography. Uh, mixture 2 contains B and C, because mixture 2 has a dot over here, which is in line with B, and a dot over here, which is in line with C. Okay, and then, because mixture 3 A and B. Mixture 3, there's a dot over here, which is in line with A, and a dot over here, which is in line with B. Uh, that's it. Question 8. Okay, a mixture of salt and sugar is separated by selective solubility. This one memorize it, okay? But if you want to understand, it's because to separate salt and 
uh, sugar salt dissolved in water uh, but it does not dissolve in ethanol so if you want to separate these two you would add ethanol because sugar dissolves in ethanol okay so what you would do is you would add ethanol the sugar would dissolve the salt will not dissolve you'd filter out the salt you'd be left with sugar plus ethanol and then to separate sugar and ethanol i think you you distillate it wait i'm not sure let me check the notes yeah over here to separate salt and sugar you would add alcohol or ethanol okay filter them because sugar will, will dissolve but salt would not so you'd filter out the salt that did not dissolve you'd be left with sugar and uh, ethanol and then you can separate the sugar and ethanol by crystallization or by distillation but make sure to use an electric heater because alcohol is flammable okay uh what was question name? and if i'm not wrong this one part a uh to separate sand and salt uh it came in the final written uh, you had to write these steps add excess water and stir carry on in filtration to separate the sand filter out the sand because the sugar would uh, the, the sand and salt the salt will dissolve in the water the sand will not dissolve so you take out the sand that's not dissolved by filtering using filtration okay uh, and then place the filtrate the salt and water in evaporating the, in an evaporating dish to crystallize the salt or you could say distillation uh, our, our teacher said Adi both of them are fine okay uh, that's uh, this one came in the written in the final okay uh, a mixture of sodium chloride and ammonium chloride by sublimation because ammonium chloride sublimes liquid air is separated by liquid air oh yeah fractional distillation because liquid air contains gases that are sorry substances that have closed boiling points anytime you see closed boiling points uh, it's you use fractional distillation not simple distillation you use fractional distillation kerosene and water are separated by a separatory funnel kerosene is oil Okay, for water and oil, how do you separate them? From using a separatory funnel. Heck, we خلصنا 6.3. Okay, this is uh, 6.4. Uh, the timestamp is 27 minutes and 35 seconds, I think. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what what volumetric flask? Okay. Okay. C. Okay, you guys remember C equals N over V. Uh, they want the volume, so you do volume equals N divided by C. Okay, and the moles is 0 0.2 and uh, the concentration is 0 0.4. So 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.4, you get 0 0.5. But the volume that you get will be in dm cube. Okay, and they want it in milliliters. So you multiply by 1000, you'll get 500 milliliters. Okay, uh, question two, uh, what is the concentration? Okay, C concentration, C equals oh wait 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 uh yeah yeah they're saying there's one liter of 0 0.2 of 0 0.2 uh molar m, m is any yeah, molar concentration 0 0.2 concentration of hcl okay uh what's the concentration of 0 0.5 liters of that same solution okay the way our chemistry teacher explained it if you get like a big a big jug of tea okay uh and you pour it across five cups let's say the big jug has 0 0.5 concentration and then if you pour it across the five cups, all the five cups will also have 0 0.2 concentration. Okay, so if you take this one liter of HCl and then you pour it into 0 0.5 liters, it's still going to be the same thing. Okay, it's going to be the same exact concentration. But if they say you added water, you took out, uh, you added water or whatever, then the concentration will change. But it's the same solution, but you're just yani, pouring it into another cup or yani, you're just taking a certain part of volume from that solution, then it's still going to have the same concentration. Okay. Okay. Concentration of ions, it's not coming, it's not in the material. Uh, concentration of ions isn't until 6.8, and now we have until 6.6, .6, but I don't know why they put it in this, uh, in this, uh, in the, in this quiz. Uh, but we took it. We still took it. Okay. I don't think it will come. Uh, yeah, I don't think it will come because it's not in our material. It's in six point eight. Okay. Question four. Question three. We skipped it because I told you it was uh, concentration of ions. Uh, what's the concentration? The concentration of a saturated solution. 
is solubility. This one, I think it came in the AMS. Uh, question five. Uh, 278 grams of CaCl2 is dissolved in 2 liters of water. What is the concentration of ions? Again, concentration of ions, uh, we don't have it, okay, because it's in 6.8. Uh, question 6. 0 0.2 moles of MgCl2 is dissolved in uh, 250 milliliters. Okay, what is the solute? Uh, yeah, uh, solute is the thing that you're dissolving. What are we dissolving? Uh, MgCl2, which is magnesium chloride, okay? And what is the concentration? C equals N over V. Okay, and the concentration equals the moles, which is 0 0.2, over the volume, which is uh, 250 milliliters. It has to be in dm cube. So we have to divide by 1,000. It will be 0 0.25. So zero. Okay, 0 0.25. You'll get uh, 0 0.8, yeah. And they want two significant figures, so 0 0.80. Zero. M, big capital M. Make sure to include the unit uh, when, when you're solving in the written. The, the unit of concentration is big M. Okay. Uh, 70 milliliters of ethanol is mixed with 30 milliliters of water. Uh, usually, the solvent is the one that's, that has a bigger volume. Okay. What are you dissolving what in? Okay. In this case, the one that has a bigger volume is ethanol. So, ethanol will be the solvent. So, water will be dissolving in ethanol. Okay. 2 liters of 2.5 uh, big M, you know, motor ethanol and water solution uh, are prepared in a flask. 250 milliliters of the solution are poured out of the flask into a beaker. What is going to be the concentration of the solution? So the solution was ethanol and water, and the concentration was 2.5 water. Then we took 250 milliliters out, and we poured it into a beaker. What's the concentration? is going to be 2.5. Why? Because then I told you, when you have any uh, solution, and you pour out any part of that solution into another uh, cup or any container, it will have the same concentration. The concentration will not change. Question 8. Uh, 50 milliliters of 1.5 mil, uh, molar HCl solution were poured into 500 milliliter volumet volumetric flask. Uh, they, wa they said water was added. Okay. What is going to be the concentration of the resulting solution? Okay. This time, it's not going to be the same concentration, 1.5, because we're adding water. So whenever you add water, you'll use C1V1 equals C2V2, okay? Concentration 1 will be 1.5 times volume 1, which is 50 milliliters. It has to be in dm cube. So you divide by 1,000. It will be 0 0.05 equals C2, which is, uh, we don't know what it is. We're trying to find it, okay? So we just put it as C2 times volume 2, which is 500 milliliters. We need it in dm cube. If I divide by a thousand and you get 0 0.5 and you're gonna get C2 equals 1.5 times 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.5 and you're gonna get 0 0.15 let me make sure this answer 1.5 times 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.5 yeah you get 0 0.15 molar concentration okay question 9 uh, 250 milliliters of 0 .5, uh, 0 0.4 molar NaOH solution. What is the moles? Okay, the moles, you know, C equals N over V. Uh, for N will be equal to CV. So the concentration is 0 0.4. And the volume is uh, 250 milliliters, which is 0 0.25. And you're going to get 0 0.1 moles. Okay, MOL. Uh, question 10, how many questions is this, 12, 30. uh, 8 grams of a solute X, okay, this one comes all the time, uh, were required for the preparation of 1 dm cube, 0 0.2, okay, they want the molar mass, if you need, if you want the molar mass, you're going to need the moles first, right, uh, and how do we find the moles, n equals cv, right, and the concentration in this case is 0 0.2, and the volume is 1, the, it's in dm cube already, so n equals 0 0.2. Now to find the molar mass, you know n equals mass divided by molar mass. Okay, and the mass is 8 grams, and the molar mass is capital M. We don't know what it is. We know what the moles is, which is 0 0.2. Uh, so you put in 0 0.2 equals 8 over the molar mass. The molar mass will be equal, you switch them, 8 divided by 0 0.2, and you're going to get 40, which is correct. Uh, question 11, 
the molar concentration is 2 okay what is the mass of NaCl needed to prepare 0 0.5 liters of this solution okay okay so they they want the mass needed to prepare 0 0.5 liters of this solution and if we need if, we're, if we want the mass that means we need the moles right we need the moles and how do we find the moles we do n equals cv or well, here in this case the concentration is 2 with the volume is 0 0.5 liters liters is the same as the m cube so how do you keep this 0 0.5 you get the moles is 1 okay uh what is the mass gonna be okay you know n equals mass divided by the molar mass the moles n is 1 uh the mass is we don't know what it is it's uh, we kept as m and uh, the molar mass of nacl n is 23 cl is 35.5 so the molar mass would be 58.5 you cross multiply you get the mass is 58.5 grams okay question 12 uh this came in every ams uh what is the concentration of 1 dm cube as uh, 0.5 moles okay n equals sorry c equals n over v uh c equals the moles which is 0.5 over the volume which is 1 you get 0 0.5 molar but they want two significant figures so it's going to be 0 0.50 how many moles okay moles they gave you the volume they gave you the concentration moles equals cv and equals cv but it's going to be 0 0.1 it's in the m cube already times uh 0 0.5 just switch it's the same thing also uh you're gonna get 0 0.05 what volume of solution should be used to dissolve 0 0.1 moles and the concentration 0 0.2 v equals n over c okay v equals the moles which is 0 0.1 over the c which is 0 0.2 and you get 0 0.5 you want two significant figures support so 0 0.50 and the m cube okay part d uh, I think they asked for the mass. Oh, no, they want the mass. Okay. Uh, before I continue, in the AMS, what most of you guys got wrong was this part D uh, because they couldn't see what they were asking for. It They said it's, uh, hydrogen nitrate or something like that. But like you you were, you were, needed the molar mass to solve. And you didn't know what the compound is because most of you didn't see it because it, it was written really small. Okay. At the end, at the end, like you see this blank here. Under the blank, they put H. N O three. They put it like this. Okay. Uh, most of you guys didn't see this, and so you got it wrong. Uh, for, just please make sure to pay attention to the question. It's written somewhere. It will always be written somewhere. Just make sure you look for it. And I think the answer was zero point one six in the exam, the part D. Uh, a student wants a student wants to prepare a hundred centimeter cube of zero point one molar. Find the mass. Okay. If we want the mass, means we need the moles first, right? We need the moles. Okay. How do we find the moles? N equals C V. Uh, the concentration is 0.1 uh, and the volume is 100 centimeter cube we need it to be the m cube so we divide by 1000 so it's hot uh, 0 0.1 okay you'll get the moles equals what is 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 0 0.01 okay uh, and now that we want the mass we know n equals m over m so 0 0.01 equals the mass which we don't know over the molar mass of sodium carbonate okay here it's not written over here but it's written up they said sodium carbonate is na2co3 okay the na2co3 okay uh, sodium is uh, 23 it's written here uh, oxygen 16 c is 12 you're gonna get the molar mass is uh, 106 i think uh, 46 uh, plus yeah you'll get you'll get 106 you cross multiply and you'll get the mass is 1.06 grams okay uh i think that's it for 6.4 uh it is okay now 6.5 okay now we're on 6.5 i think without studying everybody should be able to get 6.5 any correct because it's all all common knowledge and this is common knowledge uh all matter is made up of atoms everybody knows this Electrons carry a negative charge and are found inside the nucleus. Obviously not. Electrons are found around the nucleus. This is an atom. This is the nucleus over here. The, nu the nucleus has protons and neutrons. Neutrons don't carry a charge. Then around that, you have the electrons around the nucleus. Okay. An object that gains electrons becomes positive. Obviously not. You know, electrons are negative. Uh, similarly, charged objects attract each other. No, uh, they repel. Uh, all atoms have zero electric charge. Every atom on Earth is naturally neutral. Okay, 
unless you add electrons to it by rubbing or whatever, every atom will be neutral. Okay, it has zero. Okay, that's the global charge. Every atom has a zero charge. Okay. Uh, what is a conductor? It can be a metal, and con uh, charged particles can flow through a conductor. Uh, is it uh, a material through which they cannot flow? Obviously not. Uh, is it a state of matter? No. Is it a phase change? No. It's a conductor. You guys know what a conductor is. Okay. A proton is plus one. A neutron is zero. And electron is negative. The global charge of an atom is zero. Okay. Uh, this is what I said earlier. Uh, the charge of any atom is zero. Okay. Unless you add electrons to it or whatever. That's, that's different. Okay. Question four. Uh, an ion has 12 protons and 10 electrons. What's going to be the charge? And if it's plus 12 minus 10 equals plus 2. Uh, part B. Uh, a chloride ion has 17 protons and 18 electrons. So plus 17 minus 18 equals minus 1. Oh, uh, part, fish part C. Question 5. Uh, 19 protons, 18 electrons. And yani plus 19 minus 18 equals plus 1. Uh, what is the nucleus? Okay, the nucleus only has protons. Okay, the nucleus will always be positive. It has neutrons too, but the neutrons you don't count them because they have zero charge. Okay, but the nucleus will always be positive. So how do you know what the charge will be of the nucleus? You only count the protons for the nucleus. So since we have 19 protons, it will be plus 19. Question 6. Atoms are electrically neutral, and I said this. Electrons have a charge of minus 1. Atom, an atom has one neutron with protons moving around it? No. This is wrong. It should be a nucleus with electrons moving around it. Okay. The nucleus is negatively charged. No, we said it's positive since it only contains protons. Uh, protons have a charge of plus one. And atoms which gain electrons become negative. This is 6.5. It, uh, it was very, very short. Okay. Now we're on 6.6. Uh, 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 yeah. 6.6 is about the ions and dissolving in water and conducting electricity in water after being dissolved it's also about the precipitation reactions and uh, the precipitation reactions are those reactions they're, they're the annoying ones uh, these ones uh, you have to know this I'll explain it I, I think after I explain it will be a bit easier um, most understand that most ionic compounds once they dissolve in water they will conduct electricity but there are a few exceptions to the ionic compounds who do not dissolve in water <coughs> They are uh, AgCl, uh, AgNO3, AgBr, uh, and AgI. Wait, 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 let me, let me, and one more BAS. So these five uh, do not dissolve in water. There's a lot, obviously, but these are the five that were mentioned to us in the class. Um, so if they were to ask, because so you'd say these are ionic compounds, so it dissolves in water, but la, it's these five exceptions. Uh, and how I like to memorize it, the AGs, uh, I just I memorize the AGs, okay, uh, and uh, uh, AGNO3, how do I make this one? AGNO3, uh, it, it dissolves here, how do they say it conducts it, it dissolves. Uh, for AgNO3 dissolves, it conducts electricity, uh, but these four that I wrote here, they do not, okay? AgCl, AgBr, this is silver chloride, silver bromide, AgI, silver iodide, and BAS is barium sulfate. These four that I wrote do not dissolve uh, in water. For if you see them, no, any, I put them, and no, they don't dissolve. For which of the following are true? Pure water does not conduct electricity. You're going to say, but no, it conducts. That's no, that's salt water, you know? Like, uh, that, that's different. That's that's the water in your body. You know how we say that since the human body can conduct electricity because there's water in the body, that's not pure water that's in your body. That's water mixed with salt. And when does water conduct electricity? When you dissolve salt in, when you dissolve salt in it, okay? So pure water does not conduct electricity, but a salty water solution conducts electricity because after you dissolve that salt, it will split into ions, and those ions conduct. Pure water can conduct electricity. We said no. A conductor is a substance that does not conduct. Obviously not. And a conductor generates electricity. Obviously not. Okay, which of these can conduct electricity? 
salt obviously calcium chloride obviously because it's an ionic compound silver nitrate also ionic compound every ionic compound can conduct electricity except these four that i wrote here and there's more but these are the four that you need to know okay glucose is not an ionic compound because glucose is a molecular compound it's c6h12o6 okay that's a molecular compound uh silver chloride is agcl and we said these ones do not dissolve okay uh question two Okay, question three. I'll do question five first, and then I'll I'll do question two and three. Okay. Uh, question four is concentration of ions. Okay. Uh, you don't you don't show small. You don't need to know it because it's part of six point eight. Uh, question five in an experiment: zero point five moles of CrNO three three is uh, dissolved. Okay, it's dissolved in water. Okay. So you put, you have to, uh, they're saying, you know, find the moles of the CR3 and the NO3. Okay, how you do it is you have to split it, right? So how we write it is CR, NO3, 3, it's split, right? Into what? CR3 plus, and NO3 minus. Before you do anything, oh, well, she, this was a crystal, so you have to put solid. And since we're dissolving, these are aqueous, okay? Make sure to put them aqueous since we're dissolving them in water. Okay. Uh, now we have to balance. Here we have 3NO3, right? So, But here's the thing. Whenever you want to balance and you have like a, a subscript, uh, like so when you have Cl2, okay, and then on the other side, I have Cl. Do I put the 2 here or do I put it as a coefficient? Obviously, we put it as a coefficient, sir. Right? So... Here, I'm not allowed to put the 3 under the NO3 again. No, no, I have to put the 3 here. Okay. They're saying we had 0 0.5 moles of CrNO3. How do we find the moles of Cr3 and NO3? Okay. So what do you do? We have to RR and GR. Okay. Here we have 1 mole of CrNO3. Here we have 1 mole of Cr3. Here we have 3 moles of NO3. Okay. What's the GR? Our given is 0 0.5 moles of CrNO3. Okay. We need to find the Cr3. Put it as x since they're both one obviously the x is going to be 0 0.5 here 3 no 3 put it as x cross multiply 3 times 0 0.5 1 x you get 1.5 moles okay that's how you find uh the moles given uh given the original moles you have to write down the reaction hello i'm going to explain uh the uh the ions okay the precipitation reactions sometimes in chemistry when you mix two things together, two substances, okay, you're gonna form a, you're gonna form a salt, okay. So let's say I'll give you. Uh, before I continue to the to the ions and writing the reactions for the precipitation, uh, I'm going over the notes, and there's also a fifth, uh, a fifth, uh, a fifth ionic compound that does not dissolve, and it's calcium carbonate, which is uh, CaCO3, okay. Uh, just you know, if it came, so you don't get mixed up. This, in addition to the previous four that I wrote, and they're all here, by the way, silver chloride, silver bromide, silver iodide, and barium sulfate. Okay, please go over the notes. There's a lot of information that's very important, okay? Uh, and because I'm looking for a question to give about the precipitation reactions. Okay, for, they're going to give questions, and I have a feeling this is going to come written, because this question, I mean, uh, it's very easy to give it as a written question. And if they give it written, they would be testing your knowledge completely. Okay? Um, Precipitation reactions happen when you have two molecules that are dissolved in water. You mix them, okay? You mix them, and I think in class, in class, uh, uh, every chemistry teacher demonstrated the precipitation reaction. Uh, she, she or he would have mixed two liquids dissolved in water in a two and no, aqueous solutions. After she mixed them, like a solid would have formed at the top. That is what we call the precipitate, okay? For the precipitate is the solid that is formed at the top of the reaction, okay? So whenever, sometimes when you mix two solutions, two aqueous solutions, they're gonna form a precipitate, okay? How, how do we how do we know what, what happens? And no, I, I'll explain everything now. So Maslan here, they're saying, the solutions of sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, and calcium chloride, CaCl2, are mixed. A white precipitate of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, solid, is formed. Write the balanced equations for this reaction in three different ways. Okay, so let's let's do this one by one. Let's do it slowly. Na2CO3, okay? Na2CO3. Oh, well, she, you have to write it's aqueous, okay? 
That's the first thing. If you don't like aqueous, you lose marks. 100, 100% you're going to lose marks, okay? Because you have to mention it's aqueous. The states are very important. Okay, plus calcium fluoride. So plus CaCl2. It has to be aqueous. When they mix them, what is formed? A white precipitate of calcium carbonate, CaCO3. CaCO3 is formed. And they said it's solid. Obviously, it's going to be solid. Okay. So, so, uh, this, this, this equation, when you mix these two, we got calcium carbonate. Okay, obviously, the calcium carbonate came from mixing the Ca and the CO3. For, yeah, like I was saying, uh, the CAC, CaCO3 is formed by mixing the Ca and the CO3. So, okay, let's say we cancel these. We're going to be left with two. There's two more left, right? Well, well are they just going to disappear from the equation? No, obviously not, right? So, you have to complete the equation. You have to write. You have to add. What else do I have left? Na2 and Cl2, right? But which one do I put? Do I put Cl first or Na2 first? You have to look. Here, in this case, it's Na2. Uh, sorry, it's uh, Na2 is like, you know how you have cation and anion? The cation is the first and the anion is the second in the molecule. In this case, uh, we want to take which one's the cation. In this case, it's, it's the Na2. Because Cl2 here is the anion. Why is it the anion? Because it's the second, like it's the second uh, molecule in this in this compound. In the CaCl2, Cl2 is the second. But in the Na2CO3, uh, the Na2 was the first. So we put Na2Cl2. But here's the problem, yeah? Uh, and I looked at the solution now. Uh, I made a mistake. In, the, in this second part, when you want to know, uh, when you want to know that what's the last compound form, the Na uh, and the Cl, right? You have to use the crisscross method, okay? Na is in group one, so Na plus, and Cl is in group seven, so it's Cl minus, okay? You get this from the periodic table. I explain this in the chemistry AMS recording, okay? So you have to know what's the compound form between these two. Since it's plus one, minus one, they cancel, so it's going to be NaCl. So you can't put two and two because in nature, Na exists, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, in nature, NaCl exists as NaCl, no subscript, okay? How do we know it exists like this? Because you have to use the crisscross method. And I, I explained this in the chemistry AMS recording last time. Uh, uh, you had to crisscross, okay? That's how you find out uh, what, what's, what's the subscript going to be, if there is any subscript. But, okay, you're going to see now, uh, you have to balance. You have to balance this. Can, you, can we balance this? CaCO3, we have one calcium here, we have one calcium here. The calcium is balanced. The CO3 is balanced, because CO3 is CO3. Na here, we have one, here we have two. And Cl here, we have one, here we have two. So what do we do? Do we put two, two down? No. You put the two beside. And this NaCl, what will it be? It will be aqueous. Okay? That's how you write a chemical reaction for the precipitation reactions. But we're not done. There's three ways in which you can write the precipitation reaction. And this was only one of them. The three ways are overall non-ionic. Non-ionic, you're not, you're not writing down the charges. Okay? The second way now we're going to do it is overall ionic. Okay, which we're going to do now. And then the last way will be net ionic. I'll explain each one, one by one. Okay, overall ionic, you have to split everything into uh, charges, into, into ions. Okay, that's why we say overall ionic. And yani we want to split it into ions. For, and I, I always advise you, Saraha, to start with the overall non-ionic because after you have this reaction here, it will make everything way easier, okay? So let's start. Since we're splitting everything, you can't write it as a compound. You won't write Na2CO3. No, we're, you're going to write the Na lahalo and the CO3 lahalo. And you're going to write it the Na by itself and the CO3 by itself. You're splitting it, okay? For the Na. Na, we said it's Na+, plus, right? So does it exist? Can I write Na2? No. Okay, it's an ion. You're not allowed to write subscripts. Okay, you're not allowed. Okay, but some ions like CO3, they exist in nature as CO3. Fabtiktiva CO3. Okay, but like the ions that are single, like Na or Cl, you're not allowed to write the subscript. Tell us, for Na here, we can't write Na2. So we have to write Na, and what's the charge of Na? It's plus. Okay, Na is plus. Okay, but it's two, right? So can, can I put the two down? No. It has to be 2 and A beside it as a coefficient. Plus CO3, CO3. 
CO3 is a compound for add, you can write it. Not a molecule, you can write it uh, as a charge. It's going to be CO3 minus, uh, 2 minus, I think. CO3, 2 minus. Yeah, it's CO3, 2 minus. And it's already, it's balanced, CO3, so we skip it. Uh, my fault, I have to write aqueous here, and I have to write aqueous here. Plus, the calcium. Calcium, we write it, CA. What's the charge of the calcium? Calcium is in group 2, for it's CA2+. plus. Okay, for you write CA2+. plus. Is it balanced? Yes, so I don't have to write a coefficient, but make sure to put it aqueous. Okay, plus CL. You write down CL. Okay, the charge of CL is minus. CL minus, because it's in group 7. Okay, is it balanced? No. Do I put the 2 as a subscript or a coefficient? You're not allowed to put the 2 down, so you put it as coefficient. 2 CL minus, you put aqueous. Okay, now we're done. Now the right side. The solid, the solid, the precipitate form, you're not allowed to split it, okay? You keep it how it is. So we, we keep it as Ca, CO3, solid. You keep it like this. Well, the NaCl, we have to split it, but it will be plus Na. Na, we said it's plus, right? Okay, is it balanced? Here we have 2 Na, here we have 1 Na. What do we do? We put the 2 Na, okay? And we put A crease. Plus the Cl, okay? Here uh, we, we write down Cl. Cl is Cl minus, so hot minus, okay? Is it balanced? Here we have two Cl. So here we have one Cl. So what do we do? We put the two behind the Cl. Uptoktob a. Let me move this to the right a bit. Uptoktob aqueous. Okay. This is the overall ionic. To make things easier for you, just write them down one by one. Na plus CO3 two minus. Write them down with the charges. Then after that, balance. Okay. And make sure to put aqueous in front of everything except the precipitate form. That is always going to be solid. Okay. Now the net ionic. The net ionic, in my opinion, if you get the other two, the net ionic will be very, very, very easy. Okay? Now, when you have a precipitation reaction, there's something we call it uh, predominant ions. Okay? The predominant ions. All the predominant ions, what the ions that are contributing to the production of the precipitate. What do I mean? How you do it is you write down the precipitate. Okay, what is my precipitate here? Okay, the first thing you write is precipitate. My precipitate is CaCO3, and it's a solid. And we don't write down a charge for this, for this precipitate. CaCO3 solid. Okay, now enter what do you do? After you know your precipitate, all you have to do is you only write the components of the precipitate. The components of the precipitate, that's what we call the predominant ions. So in this case, it will be Ca, and it will be CO3. 2 minus. Ca, what's the charge of Ca? 2 plus. And then you put plus and you have it always aqueous, aqueous for both of them, right? That's it. That's how you write, that's how you write the precipitate. That's how you write the net ionic. Net ionic, you only look at the predominant ions. So the predominant ions are the ones that contribute to the formation of the precipitate. For what are they? Ca, you write the charge, which is 2 plus. Or CO3, you write the charge, which is 2 minus. Notice how the overall non-ionic, and I didn't write the charge because we're saying non-ionic, okay? But for the overall ionic with net ionic, it isn't took the charge. Okay, this is how you write the overall non-ionic, the overall ionic, and the net ionic. Hella, in the quiz, they don't mention anything about the overall ionic or the over or the overall net uh, non-ionic. Okay, that's why Anna Habit and I wanted to show you uh, these because it's in the course revision, it's in the notes. Fa if it comes written, I I genuinely think Hajibua write it down in three different ways or three different ways Hakunu not overall non-ionic overall ionic or net ionic okay Allah question two consider the following unbalanced reaction you have Fe2 plus aqueous SO4 2 minus aqueous Na plus aqueous OH minus aqueous you get Fe OH2 solid which is the precipitate and you get Na plus aqueous SO4 2 minus aqueous notice how everything here is split okay uh since everything here is split, minus Henry, they gave it to you as overall ionic, okay? But that doesn't matter. What are they asking? What are the predominant reacting species? Shunil predominant. And I'll tell and I told you the predominant are the ions of those who contribute to the formation of the precipitate. So what's contributing to the FeOH? The Fe and the OH. What's the charge of Fe? It's 2 plus. And what's the charge of OH? It's OH minus. These ones you memorize them. You should have them memorized. Uh, it's in the table I gave you last week. Okay? Write the net ionic equation. Until called net ionic, yani you only take the predominant. Okay? 
how do you start? The way our chemistry teacher told us is you start by drawing an arrow and you put the precipitate on the right, which in this case is FeOH2 solid. This is the precipitate, the solid, always the solid. Okay? Uh, and you split it up. Okay? Fe is made up of what? Fe. Uh, sorry, FeOH2 is made up of what? Fe and OH. Now you put the charge. Fe is 2 plus and it's aqueous. And OH is OH minus and it's also aqueous. Okay? But here's the problem. Is it balanced? Fe, Fe. It's balanced. Here you have OH2, here you have only one OH. So what do you do? Do I put the o, do I put the two under or no? You're never allowed to put the two under. Okay. So what do we do? We put the two beside it like this. Okay. And this is the same as this. Fe two plus aqueous plus two OH minus aqueous. Okay. Gives you draw an arrow. Fe OH two solid. Okay. This is how you write the net ion. Well, question three is very similar. Okay. Okay. Question three. Uh, same thing. Uh, same type of question. Uh, Cu2 plus Aq, whatever, whatever. Okay, they give you the overall ionic, except it's not balanced. Um, they're saying the formation of a solid from a solution is called, what is it called? Precipitation. Okay, precipitation is whenever you get a solid at the end. And it, in this case, it's um, CuOH2. Okay, and then for part B, they're saying write the net ionic equation. Okay, uh, same as last time. For the net ionic, that means they, they're only talking about the predominant. Okay, and the predominant are the ones that take part uh, in forming your precipitate okay so and i told you always start with drawing an arrow and put cu o h 2 s draw an arrow and write your precipitate okay then you have to write which ions uh take part uh in uh, forming this precipitate and obviously in this case going to be cu and o h right cu is two plus you memorize this okay and you write aqueous and o h is minus and it's aqueous, okay? Memorize these charges, you need to have them memorized. Now you check if it's balanced. Cu, you have one here, one here. Uh, OH, you have two here, but one here. So do I put the two as a subscript? No, I do not, so I put it as a coefficient, okay? And like this, I think this is the same thing. Yes, it is, okay? CuOH, two, S, whatever. Okay, it's the same thing. Uh, like this, 6.5, question five, I solved it, I explained it. Uh, question four, I skipped it because it's concentration of ions. Okay, good luck everybody. Uh, I hope you do great on the chemistry. Uh, inshallah khair. Uh, please go over your uh, chemistry notes, chapter five, chapter six, very important if you have time. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, good luck.